Okay, so um, we're going to be doing a lot of YouTube for you guys. I know I don't do near as much as most people, but the reason why is <clears throat> I want to explain my situation. So I bought one transmission rebuilt from a company. I'm not going to speak of names like I've always said. It was faulty. It had a short out solenoid plug, a uh, pink transmission fluid going through the solenoid plug, um, shorting it out when I dropped the transmission pan to find out about why, like to replace the internal harness, the wiring harness that they sent me. There was metal chunks, so I sent back the whole transmission. They sent me a second transmission. On the second transmission, I installed the second transmission uh, exactly the same way. And I did not have the shorted out solenoid plug because I still had that internal wiring harness they sent. So it came with the plug damaged and I just switched it out from the gate. The transmission seemed to have shifted fine. Um, I drove it an hour out of town to reset my monitors for smog purposes. Uh, didn't seem to have any issues. Uh, some slight vibration, but I thought it was in my front end of my truck. So I kept driving my truck for about a month. Um, and I uh, kept noticing the vibration. So I parked it in my driveway, revved it up, and the vibration was still there even though I wasn't moving, which told me it wasn't in my front end, it was somewhere else. So the other day, I'm driving around, I get a check engine light, and I investigate. So this is what we found. I found out I had a crankshaft position sensor code. Um, and that vibration that I'm talking about is either in my transmission or in my engine, but I'm pretty sure it's in the transmission because I didn't have it beforehand when I before I swapped the transmission. And my crankshaft position sensor though here, this is a 99K3500 uh, 4x4 7.4 liter. These are located in the front of the block next to the crank. Uh, pulley. Anyhow, they have a white plug on them. This piece had completely broke. And the reason why is that vibration, uh, this is my theory, and I, I have to prove this because nobody's willing to help me. Uh, not transmission shop, not a GM specialty repair shop. So if you look here though, I don't know if you can see that. See that mark there? Uh, See if we can get a better angle. See that? Okay, so the gear that's attached to the crankshaft that this crankshaft position sensor reads had hit this gear, had hit this sensor so bad that it broke it and it divoted it in almost an eighth of an inch. Okay. Now, the theory I'm getting ready to prove, and we're going to make a series of videos on this rig, and I'm going to tell you why, is I'm going to try and prove that, because I had a buddy of mine, he's been a mechanic for 30 years, he come over and said uh, that he believes the vibration is in an out-of-balance torque converter on the transmission. So the test is to disconnect the torque converter at the flywheel from the flywheel, um, you start up your motor, if the vibration goes away, it's more than likely in the transmission at the torque converter. Or because there's a bearing missing in the transmission, according to the transmission people that I called back about this. This is pretty significant of a mark. I mean, I can feel it. It's got, you know, straight edges on the, on the edges. It's like you can grip it with your nail. And uh, like this, like you can, there's a lip there, you see? So anyways, the new one, I shimmed it with double shims because of that, um, because of the vibration causing this, and just temporarily. But this led me to wanting to do more testing on my vehicle. So I did a block test and found out I had blown head gaskets now as well. 
which I didn't have before either. So I believe this transmission has sent vibration from the torque converter through my crankshaft, damaging my sensor, damaging, well, damaging the main bearings in the crankshaft, which then in return it hit the sensor, broke the sensor, and luckily threw an engine light so I didn't blow up the motor completely and ruin parts and things because um, the reason we're going to make a series is A, as soon as I do the test on the transmission to find out if it is the torque converter, that is being sent back. I'm getting another rebuilt transmission from the same manufacturer, even though they've already sent me two. Hopefully the third one will work because I have no other option to do that as I am tapped out on money because I had to buy a whole nother engine block. So I bought a long block engine block from another company. Um, it's going to take about three months to get here, according to them, to build it, you know, and have it to me. Um, in the meantime, we're going to be doing testing and repairs on the Jeep uh, Grand Cherokee I did videos on, because it's back. Uh, same thing, having crankshaft position, sensor issues, and other electrical issues. Um, this is um, our, this is going to be basically our first video explaining this is just to explain this led us to further issues and i wanted to explain what this mark can mean for you what this mark can mean is that your main bearings on your crankshaft are either going out or have gone out or something is causing that that gear in the front of your motor to hit this and damage it so it is worth looking further into and what it's going to do is it's going to lead us into a great series of videos, even though I'm not happy about um, the outcome because I have to spend a ton of money, of my own money, and I have to do a lot of time. And this isn't my main source of what I do for income. I'm actually a handyman, and I do tile work and a lot of other stuff. I just have always repaired my own vehicles growing up. So I've been doing this my whole life, just not as in depth as I'm getting now. Um, but it's leading to us, we're going to basically do a transmission swap. We're going to do what they call long block swap on the Chevy 99 Chevy K3500 with a 7.4 liter Vortec. Um, I have the four door crew cab with the, uh, the long bed, eight foot long bed. Um, Eight lug tires it's not a dually has four by four four wheel drive so we will um, even if my face shows in the video I said I didn't really want that to happen but at this point uh, I have to document things because nobody's willing to help me prove this case and this may if the transmission company doesn't want to reimburse me for my motor or my engine, per se, the correct term, may lead to a uh, arbitration lawsuit or some kind of further lawsuit, even though I don't like to sue people. I, I can't afford to lose, you know, $6,000 extra money because the transmission ruined my engine and it was sold to me, supposedly dyno tested, but out of balance. So, I'm not a transmission tech specialist as far as building them. That's why I do just transmission swaps. But I'm going to be doing a lot of research as well through dealership uh, and other, you know, sources to see if this is a possibility that this torque converter, if it's out of balance, ruined my engine. If anybody knows anything about that, please do say so. And if you know where to find the information, please do say so. Because like I've said, I've tried to contact two transmission shops. One is temporarily out of business for right now due to, I believe, renovations or something at their shop. The other one is not willing to help. And then I talked with a GM specialty shop where I live. And they also as well said they did not want to get involved. Um, just in case it did lead to a lawsuit 
this is going to be our 10 minute first video and then i'm going to go into part two of this today as i had to buy another tool for this um massive rebuild because we're doing transmission engine front end and i have to redo my rotors possibly my fuel pump and many other things so we're gonna have a lot of videos for you guys coming real soon okay i will be right back with our new tool review 